हेलो एवरीवन शिवानंद शर्मा मेमोरियल आरवी कॉलेज वीडियो लेक्चर्स एंड आई एस आर इनिशिएटिव एस एस एम आर वी कॉलेज इज़ वन ऑफ द प्रीमियर इंस्टीट्यूट रन बाई द प्रेस्टीज आर वी ग्रुप ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन हज कम अप दिस यूनिक इनिशिएटिव टू एंगेज स्टूडेंट्स एट द टाइम ऑफ दिस अनफोर्स इन मेडिकल इमरजेंसी कास्ट बाई कोरोना आउट ब्रेक एज अ सोशल रेस्पॉन्सिबल इंस्टीट्यूशन वी वुड लाइक टू कनेक्ट अकेडमिकली विद स्टूडेंट्स टू मेक विद द लॉसेज कास्ट In this connection, I Lavanya B K of Department of Business Administration has posted a video on the subject organizational behavior and the topic group dynamics. Please watch the video till the end and share with your peer groups and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Let's understand what is a group is made of. A group is a formation of two or more people. There can be more people to a group also. and the participants of a group are called as members and what binds a group a group is a commonly defined goal and evaluation of the performances can lead to sustainability of a group let's move to the second slide where i have mentioned the meaning of the group dynamics here group dynamics is basically talks about the atmosphere in the group that is functioning existing in the group and it also studies the objectives formation and rules that have defined and personified the group group dynamics concentrates on the interaction and forces that are existing not only within the group but also between the groups group dynamics is basically the energy that is behind the origin of the group and behind the sustainability of the group let's understand the characteristics of the group the first characteristic talks about two or more people in order to have a formation of a group you must always have at least two people that's a necessity you can have more people to it as well but to begin with two people is an emergency it's a requirement and second one is social uh, the social structure that is the formal social structure which talks about the importance of having a clarified or defined uh, structure that is uh, gives the role that assigns the tasks and that tells the members what must be done and who has to report to whom to give the clarity you must structurally meet the group so that's the second most important characteristics of a group and the third important characteristics talk about the common goal so if you have more people more people means more objectives more people means more goals but more goals leads to scatteredness so if you want to have the group as a conf uh, defined confined as one one team you, or one group you should always make sure that you have to define that single objective that every member has to focus on and concentrate so in that way things can be achieved in a faster pace and each member who has contributed would be happier and uh, the next one talks about the face to face interaction where it stresses on the importance of communication like how any problem or any misunderstanding any friction can be sorted with communication so that 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 what retains the essence of the group that is interaction uh, and then you have interdependence it talks about the reliability uh, which is the core factor of groups and how if you rely on somebody like there is a line uh, divided we fall together we stand so if you want to achieve something at a faster pace that can be done much better when you stand as one when you rely on each other so that talks about it and next one you have a self definition as group members talks about how each member perceives himself if you believe that you belong to a group if you believe that your ideas are not just your ideas anymore you put your ideas into a group and that becomes your group's ideas and you are not striving for realization of your objectives but your group's objectives when you define yourself that you are not you but you are a member of a group i think that just accelerates everything in a faster pace and that's how the realization of objectives take place and uh, that's all to the characteristics of the group let us move on to the next slide which talks about the stages of group development i have inserted a picture which clearly tells what each phase of it is actually defined or deals with you have five stages to group development forming storming norming forming and adjoining let me just talk about uh, each of them to begin with the first one that is forming so the forming stage is actually the prime stage of group development uh, where the members are 
you know, selected from different nook and corner of the organization, probably depending on their expertise, depending on their uh, interest. So based on any such uh, parameters you've chosen, you can pick people from different strata and you can confine them or make them as one group and tell them that from today onwards, you're going to work as one, work as one group, I mean to say. So forming is that one the first basic fundamental stage where people are brought from different places and given responsibilities, told what is actually expected from them and asked what must be done from their end. So this is where assignment of power, structure, status and affiliation takes place. So here in the forming stage, since members are not much known to each other, since everything seems to be very much a uh, might be alien to them so there either the members can be actively participating in this phase or they might be apathetic as well because people who gel up quickly might might just start off what is the reason behind their bringing up here or people who are not much known to each other who take little more time than the other people they might be little apathetic so that's what happens in the forming stage basically you you tend to get to know about each other you're trying to get into the place and trying to do what you're supposed to do so that's forming stage and the second stage talks about storming stage it talks about distortion friction and everything related to this depends it's basically peace is at risk or a threat so having been said that conflict between newbies is a common scenario in order to go ahead as a group you have to break down the tiffs and endure so what happens in this storming stage is that when your objectives is not matching with the other or other person's objective, when your interest is not matching with the other person's interest, you get you get into that tiff, you get into that misunderstandings. So when you are very new to each other, you take some time to know about each other and get, uh, you know, get into friendship. So even before that, there comes this ice with which must be broken so that ice and breaking of the ice that cold war will happen in the storming stage so that you can see in the picture it's depicted very well and moving to the uh, next stage that talks about norming stage norming stage is where the norms are set norms are the standards that must be uh, set that must be prepared and told and define the territory within which each member has to perform and in this norming stage, the group development will actually happen where various norms across the levels of the group are established for achieving common goal or critically defined goals. And the fourth development stage is called as performing stage is actually the performing or the ta task oriented uh, phase or the stage where nurturing the cause behind your existence as a group member in this group is actually given shape in this performing stage and the last stage is called as adjoining stage adjoining stage is the last stage where if your group is actually ad hoc base or made for a purpose this is the stage where you achieve the objective that you were brought for and ultimately you say goodbye to people and you just leave the group and join the places where you've come from basically it's the ending point it's the phase where you achieve the objective and you just disband in the team or disband in the group i'm sorry and go back to the places where you you come from so that is adjoining stage the last stage it can be called a separation stage also so these are the five levels of group development let's move on to the uh, next slide which talks about the types of groups I have inserted a picture which talks about a clearly defined types here you can see the group is actually defined or uh, bifurcated into two you have formal on one side and informal on the other side and formal you have three types that is command groups task groups and functional groups under informal you have interest group friendship groups and reference group let us know what is a formal group under formal group, there are three classifications made again. The first one is command groups. Command groups are basically made of this 
supervisor and subordinate basis where a supervisor assigns the tasks to the subordinate and the subordinate has to fulfill his objectives and again report back to the supervisor so in this way it is clearly structured and critically made and it is a part and parcel of the organization structure and the second one is task group which is based on accomplishing a common task any such narrowly defined tasks or not so important tasks which are actually sub uh, sidelined are given to set of people and asked to fulfill those tasks so if people concentrate on the narrowly defined tasks and fulfill their objective and report back to the supervisor again it's called as task groups are task oriented groups and the third one is functional groups where it is mostly done on the basis of specialization where specific goals or expertise are chosen and people are asked to work under that and they will be reporting back to again to the supervisor so all these three though they have their own individuality they have this one common thing that binds them is reporting back to the supervisor so these are formal groups they will be find in the organization structure only depending on the requirement informal groups are organically made they are based on the common interest shared values and there is no hierarchy they are not part and parcel of the organization structure they happened so naturally without any intentions behind it the first one to begin with is the interest group as the name itself tells you that if few members let's say three or four people have the common interest if they want to uh, share the interest if they want to build their hobbies they can just organically click with each other and make a group and that will be an interest group and friendship group is based on the friendship based on the friend cycle if they want to keep themselves engaged through interactions discussion and excursion they can form this friendship group and the next one talks about your reference group where social validation is the core agenda core interest behind uh, reference group where you create your reference group just to keep it as a basis to compare yourself for your evaluation self evaluation so these these three can be informal groups and uh, let us move on to the next slide which talks about the factors that affect group behavior or group dynamism so to begin with the first one that you have is group members resources when we talk about resources it talks about utility so when we talk about group members resources we are talking about the resources or the utility members carry with themselves so here group members resources can be knowledge skills passion personality traits that they carry with themselves which either favorably or unfavorably affect the group dynamism and the second one here is group structure where there are four important things that is group role group size group norms and group cohesiveness are uh, structured and the third one is group processes where group process is the way it functions where the structures are made uh when the structures are made the next thing is execution so the execution happens in the group process let us understand what is group role is all about group role is nothing but detailedly assigned roles to the members and it talks about the responsibility and duties and delegation of authority when members are clarified about the role and their bandwidth and their responsibilities they will be more lucrative Uh, that's what it's believed as so when you have a clarity you will perform better so group role gives you the clarity to uh, towards your goal attainment so that's a group role and the next slide it talks about group size group size is nothing but the arithmetic number as i told for a group to be called as a group there is a necessity of having at least two people and you can have more people too but if you want to retain the essence of your group and to make it more effective there is a number that must be uh, given importance a group size of 2 to 10 people so more people means more scatteredness if you want to avoid scatteredness you can choose a number from 2 to 10 anywhere in between and the next slide talks about group norms where group norms is for survival uh, these are the standards that are set and that must be followed up uh group norms give you again the clarity about how you have to perform the tasks how you have to maintain the relationships and what are the do's and don'ts uh 
so if you want to utilize the essence of the group or utilize your own resources it will be possible when norms are clarified and also you have a clarity about them so group norms is for betterment it's for proper utilization of the resources within the group available and also your own uh, your own resources and the next one is group cohesiveness the next slide uh, where group cohesiveness talks about the affection feeling of attraction and favorable evaluation that actually keeps or binds the group as one and group cohesiveness in the later stage can also uh, affect the satisfaction and also absenteeism and productivity group cohesiveness either can be there can there are two ways of group cohesiveness the first one is highly cohesive groups and the second one is poorly cohesive groups if you're more affectionate and more connected with your team members you are mostly cohesive and if you are not having any connection you don't feel that togetherness at all that's poorly cohesive so cohesiveness either ways will define will have a kind of effects on the later stage of productivity and that's all for the video thank you so much for watching kindly like comment and share please subscribe to our youtube channel thank you